Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mama Wears Athleisure. I am your host, Mariella de Santiago, a first time mom. We focus on all things mom with tips to help make life easier and more organized for all you mamas out there. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about C section rates and why it's a good idea to know this information before you decide where you want to deliver. Hi, thank you so much for having me. My name is Susie Veers. I am a doula. I've assisted about 200 moms through their births, and I've assisted at about 200 more home births. And I just really, really, really love helping moms have births that where the birth plans kind of work. And sometimes some of the factors that we think about, it's really easy to focus on the wrong things. And sometimes there's very simple things we can look at that can really safeguard our plans. Anytime we're talking about surgical births versus vaginal births, I always just want to start out by saying that surgery does have the right time and place. And totally amazing, so much strength and so much beauty and giving birth in that method. That said, most of the moms that I work with are looking to create a vaginal birth. And so that is why I wanted to bring up this little tip today, because it is one of the best things that you can look at to make sure that you will have support around that plan. I know many moms or most moms may already know this, but I like to just kind of start off with the basics. Let's talk about what a C-section is. Maybe aside from, yes, we know it, know it as major surgery, but if you could share a little bit more so that somebody that maybe just only knows those two things. <laughs> yeah. A C-section, it's basically where you have surgery to give birth. So unlike a vaginal birth where your body is really designed to open and make space for your baby and your uterus, which is a huge, super strong muscle will help your baby rotate and move down and ultimately give birth. Surgery is used when there is, ideally it should be used when it would be life-saving to a mother or a baby. And there really it is no longer safe to go towards a vaginal birth. However, that said, that's not always the case. I think that a lot of times we think that, oh, we'll leave this to the experts. And we assume that the systems around us are really set up to give us the best chances for the safest experience for us. And in some cases that is true. In some cases it isn't. The reason I know that that's a fact and not an opinion is because when we look only at low risk mothers, so only the people who are healthy, have no extra complications, things like that, there are hospitals here in the United States who have C-section rates as low as 7%. However, there are also hospitals who have C-section rates for their low risk, healthy moms as high as 70%, 70. So we're talking there about the difference in those two situations, not being about a mother's health, not being about anything that's in a mother's control, but only their location. And quite honestly, I made that mistake with my birth too. I had a surgical birth with my first mom, with my first baby when I became a mom and I had gone to the hospital with the highest C-section rate in my area. So it's just something that a lot of us don't really think would be important because it should be a safe assumption that the systems around us would always have our best interests at heart, but it's not always true. So that's a pretty big discrepancy there between the lowest and the highest. What are the current rates of C-sections in our country? I know it that seems to kind of increase. I am one of those that also had a C-section. So Nothing wrong with that, but what is the current rate for moms that tend to have C-sections? Right now, it's about one in three moms. One thing that I learned in my childbirth class when I was pregnant with my second daughter and took a class was she had us look to our left and our right so we could see our two friends next to us and said, one of you statistically will have a C-section. So I think it is really important that we celebrate our surgical birth moms because it is a big deal and it is a very valid way to give birth, but it's also okay to hope and plan and 
try to align the stars towards a vaginal birth as well. Why is the number important to consider when it comes to choosing the hospital you, if you have a choice to deliver at, right? Sometimes I know that it is dependent on your health insurance. So you kind of end up going that route and you don't really have a choice, but if you do, what's the importance to looking at the numbers? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So when I was pregnant with my first, I worked in finance and I was very busy. I was working like 50 hours a week and I didn't really do a lot of prep. I wasn't a doula at this point. I didn't teach childbirth classes. And I had a friend at work, Trevor, who also was pregnant. And he was telling me all the time, like, don't go to that hospital. Don't go to that hospital. Don't go to that hospital because him and his wife were a little bit more research focused. And I was a little bit more naive and trusting. And when you look at the hospitals that I was around, there were hospitals that had very low C-section rates. So when I say that the hospital has a low C-section rate, I mean that if you did no prep and you do nothing and you show up, you're really likely to have your outcome, right? Whereas the hospital I went to had a fairly high C-section rate. So hospital I went to is a great example because it was about 50% right? So about half of the healthy low-risk moms had a C-section and half of them had a vaginal delivery. And we're talking about the probability there of basically flipping a coin, right? For the outcome of your birth. And I think that it's really easy to say, but my doctors care about me and they would never do that. But honestly, it's not about how much they care about you. A lot of it is about the resources they have, the culture they have, the number of nurses that they have per mother and the systems that they have to support each mother and their processes. So you can have the best caring, loving care team and a mom who is educated and empowered, and you can just have these messy systems that truly get in the way. So if you go look up the C-section rate, which I can tell you how to do, and you see you have three hospitals in your area and one has a C-section rate of 15%, and one has a C-section rate of 20%, and one has a C-section rate of 45%, well, then you have a pretty clear choice to know like, well, if I want a vaginal birth, there's a pretty clear choice here about which one is really going to help me reach that goal. So yes, if you can share, how do you find out? How do you do the research as a mom to find out those numbers? I know. So luckily most of this is most hospitals do disclose the information and there's a website and I'll hand it to you so you can put it in, in show notes. It's just ratings.leapfrog.org. And it's super easy to use. When you get there, all you see is it will say search leapfrogs hospital and surgery center ratings. And so you can put in your location and you can just type in your zip code. And it will pull up all the hospitals near you. And basically you can just go through each one where you just click on the hospital name, you say view hospital rating, and there's a specific section for maternity care. So if you just kind of scroll down, it will give you kind of the ratings for the different things that they do at the hospital and how they achieve the standards. And then there's a specific section where it just says C-sections and it will tell you exactly what their C-section rate is. So once you go to the website, it's like a couple clicks. If you can order food on DoorDash, you can look up your hospital C-section rate. It's that easy. Hi everyone. It's your host, Mariella. I wanted to thank you for listening and share some ways to show your continued support. You can rate and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Share the show with friends and family. Buy me a coffee to help with the financial costs of running a podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Mama Wears Athleisure. And finally, subscribe to my newsletter. Thank you for listening. So you kind of already described this or explained this, but the ratings essentially are helpful for families that want to have a vaginal birth because the lower rating gives you a higher probability of being able to deliver that way. Unless for some reason 
baby has complications, you have complications unexpectedly that you would have to have a C-section because there's no other way around it. Would that be accurate? Yeah. Yeah. There's a great doctor, Dr. Neil Shaw does a lot of research on cesarean sections and she estimates that about 50% of C-sections could be prevented. So when I think about my first birth was a C-section and I think, did that have to be a surgery or was it just lack of resources, lack of attention, lack of care, lack of being proactive? And I truthfully don't know. I mean, maybe maybe things could have gone a different way and maybe they couldn't. Maybe that was the best way no matter what. Um, I'm really at peace with my own surgical birth, but I do know that I would have preferred to have a vaginal birth and that if I had been at a hospital where I had had maybe a little bit more attention and care and a lower nurse to patient ratio and that absolutely at a hospital like I was at that had a C-section rate close to 50%, that a lot of those surgeries could have been prevented with better systems. So I just, I share this in hoping that if that is a goal of yours to have a vaginal birth and you would prefer to not have a C-section unless absolutely necessary, then you can kind of fact check your system and say, you know what? I really am in the the best place for me or like, Hey, maybe I should change my care because I know if I give birth over there, their outcomes have just typically been better. And so that's where I want to be. Well, and you don't know what you don't know, especially your first time around. I feel like you're trying to just kind of stay afloat. There's so much, there's so much planning for like the registry and the baby and the space and the nursery. And now it's becoming also more with like preparing for your postpartum stage and the meal planning and Mm -hmm. the supports that you need. So it's hard to even think about the actual birth process when you're just trying to think about how you're going to manage having a, I know. a new little one. So I think this is, yeah, helpful for anyone that, especially if all it is, is going to a website and doing a few clicks to find those numbers. Yeah. It's really quick. It's really simple. I hope in sharing this, that it just allows you to like check something off your box and put a little bit more like trust, trust is built and earned. And I feel like knowing the outcomes that your care team typically gets and the location that you're going to birth can hopefully give you a sense of peace and safety and knowledge that like, you don't have to worry anymore. Right. That's really my goal is to help people get to a place where they're like, yeah, I don't have to worry about that. I can have fun thinking about my registry and designing my nursery because the birth part feels safe and it's not anxiety spiraling. Do you have any other tips, suggestions, or recommendations? Oh, just in general, if you can prepare for birth, I mean, I've, I made this mistake. I didn't, I didn't prepare much my first time around and I felt very overwhelmed and it was, I didn't realize how foundational the birth experience and the process would be to my start of motherhood. My kids are five and nine, so they've grown quite a bit and I've attended a lot of births. So I've gotten to kind of filter all those emotions through different experiences at this point, but just a little bit of preparation does go a long way. Yeah, you're right. And if you have the resources to get a doula, whether that's a one postpartum or during your pregnancy, that's also like a great route to go because you have like a partner that can help you better understand, I think, everything that's going on <laughs> right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're a doula, you're experienced in this. Like if you're, <laughs> if somebody had told me like, no, you're really going to need some help so that you can get sleep. Cause I was cleaning and doing laundry while the baby was napping. And then I was exhausted because I wasn't sleeping at night and we don't get it. Right. We just want to have this like spotless house still and be able to cook and everything seems easy because babies are not very mobile for the first few months, but Mm -hmm. when you're sleep deprived, it's really not. (laughs) I know it's a lot of work. And I mean, one of the other things to recognize is to just give yourself so much grace. I think we, 
have such high expectations for ourselves, especially for like returning to life as normal when really it's about evolving into this new life. One thing that I didn't realize was that once you have a baby, just feeding them alone takes 40 hours a week. So if you think about like, okay, now you have this full-time job of feeding a baby and that's not all the other things you're doing and you're doing a lot of it at night and in the morning and maybe not not the typical way we would think about a 40 hour work week, but it is the same. So just recognize all the work you're doing, get the support that you need, ask for help. And if you're like, I really don't know how to ask for help and I don't know what my needs are, that's okay. There's so much like self-discovery and growth that happens as we enter motherhood, but if it feels a little messy, just remind yourself like, Hey, that's part of it. And it's supposed to be a little messy and you get to discover so many really, really great things about yourself as you kind of grow and evolve through it. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot more for your second time around if you plan to go that route, right? (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's so much easier the second time around. (laughs) Yeah. You kind of know what to expect. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although I will say that my two daughters were polar opposite. So all the things that I had thought I knew, I was like, okay, now there's a lot of unlearning and relearning and, but it's, it's really fun. And I don't want to say like, oh, it goes by so fast because when you're in it every day can sometimes be so much, but then you get far enough out and it's like, you forget, you forget all the hard things and you're left with all the memories of the, the really beautiful moments and the realization that you did this, like you built this and you grew this human and nurtured them and nourished them. And it's amazing seeing them grow. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to walk us through all this and share your knowledge and find out how to get those numbers. So yeah, I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram. I'm happy to kind of show you how or walk you through it. We have instructions both on our website and inside of our childbirth class as well. So thank you. I'll have all of that linked in show notes. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice to chat. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week for our next episode. You can find us on Instagram for more updates and tips. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts and give us a review if you like us.